Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, good to see you. Um, good to see you, all those who are online. Thanks for joining in. Uh, I hope you can hear me well. So, good, good morning once again. Okay, good to see you. I hope you had a good weekend, uh, a blessed weekend uh, at church and serving um, and whatnot. Is everybody healthy? Oh, yes. Healthy, all well. All is well, good with your health. Okay. Good, good. Hi, Jachin. Good morning. Prabhu, Arula, Karen, Samuel. Thanks for joining, guys. Good to see you all. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, let's pray, shall we? Let's pray. Father, we we are so honored, we are so privileged that you call us your sons and daughters. We thank you for this privilege that we have, Father, where we can learn from your word. Thank you, Lord, that you've preserved your word for over thousands and thousands of years for us so that we can read from it, we can learn from it and be encouraged, be blessed, God. And so, Holy Spirit, we invite you today, this morning, come into this room that we are in, come into uh, every room of every person who is joining us online. Invade our spaces, change our atmosphere with your presence, I pray. Prepare our hearts, Lord, for the things, for the hidden things of your word, I pray, God. I give you all the glory, honor, power, and praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Awesome. Awesome. Great. Um, so, a couple of things that we learned in the last class, very quickly. W what are the, some of the things that we learned in the last class? Chira. We just started, Chira. <laughs> About worship, yeah. On oh, praise and worship class, we learned about worship. Okay. Sorry. Recognizing, yeah. Thank you, Nikhil. Yeah. Anybody else? Um, yeah. Online, feel free to share what we've learned in the last class. Some of the things that you remember of what we learned. Worship is first thing. Communion with God. That's the third point. Okay. The first one is worship is recognizing who God is. Right. Um, it's the importance of it. Uh, we saw that very briefly from uh, um, John chapter 21 and how John recognizes the voice and the presence of God. And we concluded that oh, if you call yourself a worshiper, if you say that I am a worshiper, uh, that means you should be able to or you will be able to recognize the voice of God and his presence. Right? You know, okay, he's here. That's a mark of a worshiper, right? Um, worship is communion with God, as we already spoke. Uh, what else? Worship is reverence for God. Yeah, uh, reverence is what, like respect, right? Like uh, at most fearful respect, isn't it? Um, yeah. Thanks, Nina. Identify and acknowledge. So coming back to that first point, uh, worship is recognizing who God is. There are two aspects to recognizing. You identify and you acknowledge. Right? Um, so I, I hope that's in your notes, right? So there are two points for the first thing. Uh, when you recognize, you identify, and then you acknowledge. Right? Um, so that's the, what, what else did we learn? Anything else? Yeah, that's the fourth point. Yeah, worship is our response to what? Yeah, worship is our response to an encounter with God, right? Um, yeah, worship is encountering and acknowledge his existence, intense love and admiration. Thank you. Search my heart, God, allowing God to deal with our inside. Jachin is sharing. Allowing God to deal with our insight. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, but okay, so have you been learning something in this course so far? What we've come one and a half months now? Yeah, uh, have you guys online been learning something? Okay, um, has it helped you in worshiping God a little differently? 
<laughs> just asking yes no yeah something uh, some revelation yeah okay but i i really hope that has been happening i you know i hope this course is not just uh, knowledge uh, you know, anybody can gain knowledge by just reading anything. But I hope this course is not just knowledge and it helps you, you know, uh, put in practice and whatnot. Okay, um, cool. So the fourth point in what we learned last week was uh, worship is our response. Okay, everybody say response. Okay, so what is a response? What is a response? Reaction. The what? Answer. Is that right? Did I hear you right? Okay. How hungry you are for God, okay? But what is a response? Just responding. Like if someone is calling you, you respond to their calls, no? Or if you miss their call, you respond, right? You call back. That is what responding is. You message back. You call back. If someone is calling you, you answer the call. That's what a response is, isn't it? You guys with me? Yeah? So um, we are saying that worship, okay? Please follow. We are saying worship is a response that means you are responding to an encounter with god are you with me worship is a response to an encounter with god now we are learning about worship and then we say that it's a response to an encounter with god and so I felt like, okay, this is not in your original notes. But then I feel like, I felt like, okay, we need to learn just a little bit about what encounter is. Because if, like, if worship is a response to an encounter, that means encounter is kind of important, <laughs> isn't it? Uh, so I don't know what's the word or the name for encounter in other language. Because uh, I was sharing it uh, in. Um, in a short-term Bible college in Varanasi, and I was using this word encounter, and uh, I said uh, encounter there means you know Golimar in Hindi. But I'm not talking about that encounter, <laughs> uh, but but what is uh, what's the word? Any word for encounter means in Hindi? You're going to say a word. I'm not going to know it because <laughs> I'm going to agree, believe that it's the right thing. Okay. So what does that mean? You meet. Ah, point. Okay. So say that again. Mulakath. Did I say it right? Okay, Hindi. Mulakath. Okay. So my, okay, your classmate over here, he's saying Mulakath is in Hindi. Okay. Any other language? Malayalam? Sorry? To meet, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that's uh, that's English thing. Yeah, so we'll uh, look at that just a little bit more. I want uh, in another language anything if anybody knows uh, encounter. Okay, I'll I'll give an example in English, right? <clears throat> so to encounter means uh, let's say that uh, let's take an example. Okay, so you've heard of Pastor Ashish, right? So you've heard of him. Uh, you know, I was like, oh, Pastor Ashish, you know, he's like that. Your friend, uh, I'm telling you this for the first time. He's like, you know, Pastor Ashish is tall. You know, he he shaves every day, and then he combs his hair to you know the left or whatever he you know, and he knows the Bible really well. You've heard of him, yes? And then a day comes where you meet him, right? You it's like you're face to face with him, it's like oh. So now your imagination is all is like okay. So this is how you actually look, types. You know. So you've come with an encounter of his presence. You've come face to face with him. Are you with me? Right. It's also a sudden meeting. It's like okay, you are shopping in a mall somewhere, and you is like, it's like I did not expect to meet you here. That is another encounter. Right. You're taken by surprise. It's like. Or you see this person in the mall saying, "Okay, I just saw this person. I don't, I don't want that person to look at me or see me, because uh, uh, there'll be uh, some problems." Uh, but that is also an encounter, right? So having understood that, um, is 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 it is it clear what encounter is? Any word for it in Malayalam? 
little louder. Okay. Let's fight. Oh, okay, yeah. Meeting face to face, right? Okay. What else? Anything else? Any other examples, definition? I'm thinking. To meet unexpectedly. Uh, to meet unexpectedly. Yeah. This is very important for us to understand. That's why I'm digging and digging and digging. Okay. So Nina says face to face. Yeah. To come face to face. Yeah. Um, what else? So when we say to encounter God, when we say that you are encountering God, that means you are coming face to face with Him. Okay, that you are encountering the person of who He is, like everything about Him, right? So, a couple of things about encounter. So, why an encounter with God matters? Why does it matter? Why is it important? Why an encounter with God matters? That's the first question we'll try and answer. Okay, you can write it down. So, first question. Okay, why an encounter with God matters? Okay. And this is also a question for you. Why an encounter with God matters? Okay, Nina says to definitely know who he is. Yeah. Why does why does an encounter with God matter? Does, do you think it's important for us to have an encounter with Him? Not just encounter, encounters. But, <laughs> uh, but how many of you here agree, believe that encounter with God is important? An encounter with God is important. Do you believe it's important? Yes, no, maybe? No, tell me why. It changes us. Okay, what else? Uh, Krisha says it confirms his existence. Right? So when we have an encounter with Gom, okay, it confirms his existence. Okay. Um, Jachim says I get to know him intimately and my perspective changes. Yeah? Sorry? To know more about him. Okay. Why is it important? I, yeah? What else? Think, 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 think. A clear picture of who he is. We get a clear picture of who he is. Okay. Immense faith. Intense faith. Okay. Ooh, we're getting intense now. All right. Sean. <laughs> it's too early in the morning for a topic like encounter. <laughs> You're not sure if we need an encounter with God. Okay. Okay. That's a fair enough question. So, so to answer that question, why we need an encounter with God, like the first thing is we need an encounter with God to start a relationship with Him. Right? It is in somewhere in our journey in life or as a Christian, we've encountered His love. We've encountered his faith. We've encountered his faithfulness, his uh, provision, his protection. We've encountered him right through his attributes. And so because of that, that it's initiated a relationship with him, right? So the first thing is yeah, an encounter with God. I mean, if the heavens doesn't open, you don't have visions of angels and you know it's but it's, it's just small things like that. Why an encounter with God matters? Somewhere, if I ask you, why are you a Christian? You would say, okay, on so-and-so, when I was going through this, you know, he spoke through me through his passage. That is also an encounter. Isn't it? Like, his, your encounter is like, oh, you know, he spoke to me. And so I'm sure, and you've, you know, you've written down, you've colored a few passages. You've put, maybe some of you have put dates in your... Uh, in the Bible, I don't know. I have the habit of doing that, and so uh, 
so this particular Bible is approximately 20 years old. Uh, I mean, the my thing, I'm not saying God's word is only, it's, it's eternal, but <laughs> it's so uh, this very thing. So I can take you to pages and pages and say, okay, uh, on April of 2005, when I failed in my second PUC exam in mathematics, he spoke to me from Isaiah 54, from this passage, and I've written the date and everything. I remember the room. So that's an encounter that I will never forget. Right? It's a moment in history. So I've made my history with God. Right, So I can take like that pages and pages and pages and say, okay, here's one encounter. Here's another encounter. There's another encounter. So we need an encounter with God for us to start. Most of the time we have starting problems. No, it's like, okay, can anybody pray? It's like, uh, who wants? This is starting problem, right? So, but we need an encounter with God to start a relationship with God, isn't it? Uh, so Karen is asking a question saying, does encounter with God always have to be with seeing God's uh, face or just experience his presence? Uh, Karen, I think we just answered that uh, right now, right? Um, so, uh, and Justin says, uh, my hunger and thirst for him is fulfilled in his presence and in our encounter with him. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, thanks, Justin, for sharing that. Right. So uh, we need an encounter with God. Uh, to start a relationship with God. Now, and each encounter is a seed. Everybody say seed. You know what is a seed, right? What's a seed? A fruit seed, you know, that you plant in the ground and tree comes out of it, right? So a seed is never meant to be a seed, right? A seed, a Hindi make a beach, bija. Correct, no? Bija is in which language? I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, it's a seed, isn't it? So a seed is never meant to be just a seed, right? You put it on the ground, you water it, you nurture it, and it's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to grow uh, into a tree and then bear fruits and whatnot. Are you with me? Right? So it's, it's the same thing with encounter is encounters are a seed, but it's never meant to be a seed, okay? Your relationship with God starts with an encounter. Listen to me very carefully. This is important. Your relationship with God starts with an encounter, but it is continued by faith. Are you with me? Right? So the question is, when you have that first encounter with God, when you've encountered, it's like, okay, I've encountered his love through his word. I read the gospels and I see that this man called Jesus died for me on the cross. And then you are changed. That's one moment. What are you going to do with that encounter? Right? So you have to nurture it. You have to keep, you know, reading the word. You know, you have to build your faith. Are you with me? Right, so encounters with God builds your faith. Everybody say encounters with God builds your faith. Okay, one more time, guys. Come on. Encounters with God builds your faith. Okay. Uh, can you think of any encounters from the Bible? Moses and burning bush. Okay. Paul, what? Paul. On the road to Damascus? Okay, sure. Abraham, Jacob. Okay, just very, very quickly, uh, Nina has a question here. Just a question. We go to his throne in confidence, knowing that we receive mercy and find grace in our time of need. Um, the Holy Spirit is in us, confirming his presence, and we know by faith. Uh, just a question. We go to his throne in confidence knowing that we receive mercy and find grace in a time of need. Yes. You know. And the Holy Spirit is in us, confirming his presence, and we know by faith. Yeah. And so, uh, as I mentioned, right, uh, so encounters, I mean, your relationship with God starts with an encounter. Uh, I'm just trying to respond to Nina's question. And I also mentioned that, um, you know, your relationship with God starts with an encounter, but it continues by faith. Okay. Uh, I mean, there are times that when there will be days where our day, you know, where you feel like 
giving up, you're low, and you're going through that wilderness season, as in everything seems so uh, uncertain and whatnot. But uh, I'm, I'm responding to a question, so I'll get. Um, and so it's it's in times like that when you go back and see, you remind yourself of an encounter that you had, and that's kind of that will kind of build your faith as well. That's one of the ways that you build your faith. Uh, and I hope that answers the question, Nina. Sean, you had a question. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, Sean was just sharing that, uh, and this is for guys online is uh, Abraham is a prime example of how your relationship with God starts with an encounter, but it is built by faith. Like he, you know, like Sean was also sharing that. Uh, before his next encounter, before God speaks from, so God speaks to Abraham, he leaves his household, he goes from the land called Ur, you are, and then he, yeah, and he goes to the other side of the world or country or whatever, and then he builds an altar, then God speaks to him there. And so he traveled by faith, but you know, the relationship with God began with an encounter, right? Is you guys with me so far, right? Yes, no. Yeah. Yeah. Everything, see, I'm not going to put encounter the word, I mean, our encounter with God. We can take the word encounter and look up the definitions online, like dictionary, you can see. But, uh, but encounter with God, that's a different thing. So I'm not going to say, okay, your encounter with God is just like this. You will only see the heavens open. If you don't see the heavens open, that means you haven't had an encounter with God. If you didn't see Jesus like Paul saw, that means you haven't had an encounter with God. I can't undo that. That's that is not correct. Right? Your encounter with God will be very different from how I encountered God. The way he speaks to you will be different from the way he speaks to me, right? So all that is an encounter, isn't it? Um so okay, so the, the first thing that Adam sees when he wakes up is the face of God, like as in, you know, he sees his creator and, and we were all made, we were all created to live in constant encounter with him. Okay. So every moment, so encounter is what? It leads to a revelation. Why are we saying that worship is a response to an encounter? Because an, in, in, in the encounter, there is a revelation of who God is. One of you shared there's a different perspective, right? The way we see him changes. Yes or no? That's what happens in an encounter. So, I mean, in Revelation, we see that angels have been singing holy, holy, holy for don't know how long. Okay? And imagine every time they circle around the throne and say, like, oh, I did not know about this. And they cry out holy. And they go around like, Again, holy, you know, all they can do is every time there is a revelation of who he is and their response is worship and they cry out holy. Are you with me? Yeah, there's so many examples uh, in the Bible. Uh, everything that you've mentioned and everything you guys are mentioning online, uh, David, Gideon, Solomon, Elijah. Solomon's encounter is amazing. He's having a conversation with God in his dream. It's, <laughs> uh, it's amazing, yeah. Uh, do we need to depend on the encounter in that way? No, or is encountering uh, encounter knowing he leads, guides in what we need to do or avoid? Uh, Nina, so so the question is from Nina. She's asking, do we need to depend on the encounter uh, in that way? Uh, you don't long for an encounter to uh, depend on anything or for a breakthrough or whatnot, but all of that is a parcel of it it's a package of it um all of that happens but then I, like i mentioned we were created to be in constant encounter with him like david cries out in psalm 27 uh, verse 4 uh, what does it say psalm 27 verse 4 one thing have i desired of the lord okay he starts off his prayer by saying one thing 
that means there are a lot of things, right? So he says, one thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord for all the days of my life, that I may behold his beauty and his glory, right? He, his prayer starts off by saying just one thing. So uh, you want to encounter God because you love him, you want to know him more. Uh, and, and the breakthroughs and the guiding and the leading, all of that comes along with it. It's like a complete full package. Uh, that's my humble opinion. So, yeah, Prince. Correct. Yeah, that's what it was. So encounter, like what you have can be different from what Shira has. Uh, that's what we do in the supernatural hour is towards the end of worship or whatnot. Basically, what we are asking is, what encounter did you have? And so you had a different vision. You had a different word. You had a different thing. So everybody have, will have a different encounter. So, uh, But that's what an encounter is. Are you guys with me? Are you guys with me? Yes. OK, so that's what an encounter does. And uh, you know, kind of important. Um, and of all the examples that you mentioned, I love them all. But then there is a very favorite encounter of my, uh, you know, in the Bible. Uh, like, there are two, actually. But one, we will talk about it in the next week's class. Uh, but both of their names are Mary. <laughs> both their names are Mary. So I want to just talk about uh, one of them. And that's from John chapter 20. Uh, can we all just go to John chapter 20, please? One of such, un, uh, you know, my memorable encounters with God, um, I will never forget, is um, I, th I was in, I think I was in sixth standard, I th uh, sixth or sixth standard, yeah, I think it's sixth because I was wearing half pants. Uh, from seventh, it was full pants. So <laughs> I was wearing half pants. I was getting ready. I was ready for school. I was having my breakfast in the morning, uh, eight o'clock or so. And uh, those days, we used to have this channel called. Uh, TBN network. If you, some of you are not that old, so and TBN or Miracle Network at eight o'clock to eight thirty was uh, Benny Hinn's uh, time. You know that they, they would play Benny Hinn's meetings, and uh, worship was going on. And I will never forget this song. It's called uh, "Sound of Heaven." The song called "Sound of Heaven." Uh, you should listen to it. I was eating my. I was having my breakfast and. And that, word, that, that song is going, and something is changing in the room. Like the atmosphere is changing, and I can uh, feel the presence of God. Now, I was too young to understand what was happening. I, now I can tell, OK, that it was his presence and whatnot. But then I didn't know what was happening. And you know, and there was like this thick, tangible thing. Like if you could put your hands, it will be like you're pushing through like a water. Like you know, you could feel it. it was, tangible and uh and i know like my physical person is sitting and having breakfast but i i knew that my inner man as young as i was my inner man was like on the you know on the ground worshiping him and that moment i will never forget in my life uh for in every single encounter that i've had it, it keeps reminding me of that moment uh you know just before the school uh you know this worship going on is, is holy 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 and then from since then uh this god's just been uh placing this uh desire for uh a generation of uh you know who will long for his holiness uh that who would encounter his holiness uh, that's always been in my heart since then 13 or 12 years old um, so that's one of my, um, un, you know, unforgettable encounters. There's been so many since. But yeah, let's go to John chapter 20. I hope you all are there, right? It's uh, quite a reading, so don't. Uh... <laughs> okay, John chapter 20, it says, here we go, verse 1. 
early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. Verse 2, so she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, and the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. You all with me, right? Yes? The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. So Simon and Peter are both inside the tomb now. He saw and believed. Verse 9. They still did not understand from the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Are you all with me so far? So what has happened here? The real story begins from verse 10, but let's pause. So what has happened here? The context for the text is um, Jesus has been crucified. He's dead. They've buried him in the tomb. Yes? And so Mary Magdalene it says while it was still dark, she first went, before anybody could wake up, before any of the disciples could wake up, she ran to the tomb. Are you with me? Now the story begins, verse 10. Then the disciples went back to their homes. Underline that. Then the disciples went back to their homes. Underline the next verse also. But Mary stood outside the tomb crying. But Mary stood outside the tomb crying. She wept. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? The angels are asking, woman, why are you crying? She responds by saying, they have taken my Lord away, she said. And I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you've put him, and I will get him. Can you underline those lines, whichever translations you are reading? Tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. Mary. Encounter, revelation. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Reboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Amen? Right? It's quite a... We haven't even finished the chapter. 
there's so many, so many things to, uh, I mean, we can meditate and talk about from this passage. Okay, from let's go for the entire thing, what we just read. Some of you are like, okay, I've read enough of Bible for the entire month. <laughs> Um, first thing, Mary, early in the morning, while it was still dark, while it was still dark, she ran. How many times in the Gospels do we read that Jesus, it says about Jesus, while it was still dark, he would slip away and go pray. Are you with me? Right. So Mary was just seeking. She wanted to meet with Jesus. She, she just wanted to go. She's, Jesus is dead. He's buried. You know, but then she just wanted to run. Uh, Simon, Peter, they both go to the tomb, and Simon goes in. Uh, John doesn't. Then after, you know, then eventually he goes in. But the turning, the turning point in the story is both of them, the disciples of Jesus, who traveled with him, who did life with him for three and a half years, or so. They go back home. But Mary stood outside the tomb, crying. She did not give up, give up. She wanted to press in just a little deeper. So many times we give up in our pursuit of God. We will be like, okay, I've been seeking, I've been searching so much. Now let's let me give up and go back. But Mary wanted to press in just a little more. While both of them went back, she stood outside the tomb, crying. And then two angels come. Okay, for me, I, I, you know, I'm thinking. I think this is the first time. I'm not sure in the Bible where God sends two angels, because every time you read, it's just one angel, Gabriel. You know, is coming as a messenger and whatnot. But then, I'm just, you know, uh, God's like, no, she's too special. Two angels. If I saw an angel, I'd be like, oh, angel, you're so beautiful, amazing, and whatnot. But Mary doesn't seem to be impressed. The angels are asking her, like, why are you crying? Uh, she's like, you know, it's, I think this is also the first time in the Bible where there's an angelic encounter where angel is not saying, fear not. Are you with me? Most of the time when there's an angelic encounter, it's like, fear not. Yeah? She's like, I don't care about you guys. I don't care about you. I mean, you know, I'm just paraphrasing it. I'm just reminded of Moses' encounter and say, God's like, I'll send angels before you. Moses is like, if you don't come, I won't go. I don't need the promise. I want the presence. Mary is like, yeah, angels, all cool, very nice. You know, she still continues crying. Uh, but they have taken my Lord away, she said. And I don't know where they have put him. And so Jesus eventually shows up. Jesus eventually shows up. And he calls out to say, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Anytime God is asking you a question, it's not because he doesn't know the answer. He's, he's just being God. He's just being cool. You know. <laughs> Who is it you're looking for? He knows that she is looking for him. Isn't it? Like, duh. <laughs> okay. Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, Listen to this response. Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you have put him. I will get him. She's, she's having this conversation with Jesus, thinking that he's a gardener. She's saying, they have taken my master away. If, you've, if you know where he is, tell me, I will bring him. Does anybody here know how heavy a dead body is? I've carried a few in my lifetime.
They are very heavy. They are very heavy. You need four people properly to carry them. Properly. Mary is saying, I will bring him. Mary was, uh, this is not supposed to happen. <clears throat> Mary didn't stay back so that she can get a breakthrough or a healing uh, or deliverance from any demonic possession or oppression. Uh, she was willing to love on a dead Jesus. Even if Jesus could not do anything for her, I want him. Even if Jesus doesn't do anything for me anymore, it's fine, but I want him anyway. Are you guys with me? So she was willing to love on a dead Jesus. She's, Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Reboni. Finally, the revelation comes. Identifying comes. Acknowledging comes. And then the result of all of that is she goes back to the disciples and says, I have seen the Lord. I have seen the Lord. First evangelist. First evangelist. There, Mary Magdalene, woman. I just want to share very quickly um, just three points from Mary's encounter with right the first thing is you have to be hungry to meet with him you want you have to be desperate like mary you know what we we sometimes we overuse that word desperate uh as if i'm desperate you know we sing the song and i i'm desperate for you you know but imagine if you haven't had a sip of water for a week for one week, how desperate would you be? How desperate would you be? That's desperation. That's, you know, you're fasting and praying and all you're having, you're not having visions of angels, but you're having visions of cakes and biryanis and <laughs> it's like that's desperation, right? So the first, le first lesson from her life is she was hungry. She was desperate. When the disciples went back, Simon and John went back, you know, she stood outside the tomb, weeping, weeping. She was intentional. Right? Um, and then the second point from her life is focus. The first thing is what? Hunger, desperation, right? Intentional. The second lesson from her life is she was focused. Two angels. No problem. I am not going to be distracted. I know who I want. I know who I want. I want Jesus. She was focused. And the third point, which, is, which resonates with the first and the second, is she was persistent. Everybody say persistent. Patient. Right? I initially shared that we tend to give up very easily in a pursuit for more of him. If I ask that question saying, how many of you are hungry for God? All of you will put your hands up. Right? The difference is, how deep are you willing to go? Right? I, will you patiently... The psalmist says, I waited patiently on the Lord. There's an element of patience which is necessary. Patient, they, they don't say patience is a virtue for nothing, isn't it? So Mary was persistent. She was waiting. 
she's talking to a gardener is like and she's still focused and she's like if you've taken my lord away tell me where he is i will bring him back focused intentional hunger right so um i just want to pause here and um <laughs> Nina says she has made him. Um, and, and, and I was, uh, I mean, just, I think 2012, I was reading this passage. 2000, it was in 2011 when I first read John chapter 20. And, uh, and then I was just having, uh, meditating on his word, and I was reading Song of Songs. Yeah, I was reading Song of Songs. It, it's, uh, one of my favorite books in the Bible. Uh, okay, forget it. A Song of Songs, chapter three. Uh, Song of Songs, chapter three. It says uh, it talks about, um, you know, I am my beloved, and this beloved is looking for her lover, right? And she is searching through the streets, saying, "Okay, uh, if you've seen my beloved, tell me. When I find him." I will not let go of him. This is the Song of Songs, chapter 3, verse 3 or 2, somewhere there, okay? Um, if when I find my beloved, I will hold him and I will not let him go. Right? And then the you know, Holy Spirit, like an immediate nudge, is saying, okay, do you remember? Like a similar image of this in John chapter 20. Because when Mary, when she finally finds, knows that it's Jesus, she it doesn't say she grabs hold of him, but then Jesus says, Don't hold on to me, Mary. I have to get back to my father. It's like that moment was prophesied like hundreds of years ago in Song of Songs 3. Right? And so eventually she goes and tells the disciples, I have seen the Lord. I'm finishing now, guys. Okay. We need an encounter with God to start a relationship with God. Yes. And for that encounter, you, you get hungry for God. You are focused. You press Him because you want more of Him. And then you eventually see the Lord. You, you, you know, you encounter Him. But the result doesn't stop there. Your encounter is not just for you. Can I say that again? Your encounter is not just for you. Mary eventually went back and said, I have seen the Lord. To build everyone else's faith. Right? And so all of this is our response. Will lead to just one thing, and that is worship. So finally, the fourth point of what we learned last week is when we say worship is our response to an encounter with God, all of this happens in that encounter. You're hungry for Him, you're desperate for Him, you are focused, you are patient, you are persistent, then there's an bam, encounter, there's a revelation of who He is. It's like, whoa, I did not know this is how you look. That builds your faith. And then you are motivated, you are you are uh, encouraged to go and share the gospel. So there's a lot of things that happens, right? Are you guys with me? So we will stop here. Do you have a question? Yes, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. So Okay, so there's a question in the class here saying, what do I mean by encounter? Is it physical? Is it visions? Is it experience, Holy Spirit, and whatnot? So it could be all of it. It could be any one of it. Right? I can't put it in the box and say, I mean, this is what encounter with God is. He might decide to encounter you like Paul. You know, you never know. Or he might encounter... So that's the thing, right? Uh, in Elijah's encounter, you know, I say, uh, there was a fire and trembling and whatnot, but the Lord was not in it. And he was in this gentle whisper. And in Moses' encounter, we see that Moses, with God spoke to Moses face to face out of the fire. So he can be in the fire, he can be in the cloud, he can be in the gentle whisper. He is God. He will choose to speak with you through a donkey. That's an encounter. So 
I am not going to make that mistake of putting him in a box and say this is what encounter is. So yeah, be ready, guys. Expect the unexpected. Okay, I'll stop the recording now. Uh, also, uh, I'll see you all in 10 minutes. Thanks, guys.